Hello, everybody. This is Diana, the Wandering Sewist. Welcome to my live stream. Um, so this evening, I am going to continue sewing the Faith Well storage bin. But before I do, I have a couple of things to tell you. First off, what am I wearing? I am wearing the uh, Fox Hill dress from uh, Jenny Rushmore's Ahead of the Curve book. And I I love it. I got it. I made it in this beautiful fabric. It's a Ponte fabric from the Stitch Witch in Pretoria, South Africa. And um, I put it with these earrings that I got in France in October. I got them at um, just a, a little... Just a little shop in one of the old towns. Um, and then also, I wanted to ask you about this pattern. So this is McCall's 3427. Hi, Copper Horse. I'm, I'm so glad that you could make it. Welcome, welcome. So I want to make these cute little barnyard animals for my three granddaughters. And um, I need to find these specialty fabrics like this. This is like a fleece, like a cow print. And the sheep has a little Sherpa. So I need to find a, uh, and the little piggy has a, a pink fleece. So I need to find these fabrics. Um, the cow print will probably be the hardest one to find, I think. So if anybody has any ideas, I would appreciate uh, some tips on where to find that. Um, also, I know Copper Horse says they're adorable barnyard animals. Yes, they are. And you know, um, they stack inside of each other. See? The little mousy is the smallest, and then they all fit inside the cow, and then the cow has a bottom that Velcro's closed, and then the little the horns are the handle, so the little one can just carry them around. So cute! I'm just I'm in love with this pattern. Uh, that's McCall's thirty four twenty seven. I'm in love with this, and I can't wait to start making it. But um. I need to find that cow print fleece to make the cow. I think that's the one that's going to be the hardest to find. So, um, as you know, we recently moved to our house here in Prague. And um, I've just looked in the last box this evening. Just opened the very last box finally. And um, I have found all of my art and things that I want to put on the walls. And down here in the basement in my sewing room, I wanna uh, showcase some of my quilting pieces. So these are some of the pieces that I have made. This is the Missouri Star from the Missouri Star Quilt Company. I made that one just because I loved it. And I had this teal and orange. I had a, a layer cake and I just couldn't, I just had to make it. So, and then um, I made this uh, about six years ago for my beautiful daughter, Naomi. And since she's gone, it's mine now. Um, so I'm going to hang that one up in here. And then um, the last wall hanging I made, the most recent one, is a carpenter star. And this is a free pattern on, uh, I found it on Pinterest. So I want to hang these up, like right here around the sewing machine. So I think either the carpenter star or Naomi's should go right here above my machine. And then the other one can go behind me right here. 
And then um, I think the little one, the Missouri Star, should just go right over there, right in this area next to where those pipes are. I think that um, that will make like a little sewing nook corner filming area. And then this huge, this is a huge tapestry that my son-in-law brought me back from Jordan. And I'm going to, I think I'm gonna hang it on the far wall behind you. There's a big blank wall back there that does a lot of echoing. And I think that that wall will, um, that tapestry, if I hang that back there, it's going to help to absorb the sound. So those were some things I wanted to mention before I get started. And if you have a, if you have an idea about which, which one of those quilts I should hang up over my sewing machine, should I sew, should I hang the carpenter star? That's this one over my machine? Or should I hang Naomi's um, lilies that I did as a, a hand-sewn applique? These are hand-sewn applique lilies. Should I put that over the machine? What do you think? Right here. Should it be the lilies or the carpenter star? I don't know. I literally cannot make up my mind. So if you have an opinion, I'm willing to hear it. Okay, let's get to our project of the evening. Uh, Copper Horse says, textile form in Prague might have fabric. Uruguyan 41611 Prague to Vinhorodny. Ah, okay. Thank you, Copper Horse. I will look for textile forum. It's in Prague 2, which is a quite a bit from Prague 6, but that's all right. Um, I'm sure there's buses that go there. All right. So um, remember, what did I put my... I have to go grab my Faithwell storage bins I've already made to show you. They're behind you. I'm going to just get them. I'll be right back. Don't touch anything while I'm gone. I'm back. Okay, so remember that I had made the smallest one out of this fabric. This is the small. And then on my last live, we sewed this one together and I had not been paying very close attention to the instructions and I kind of messed them up a little bit, but it all came out okay in the end. So um, this is the medium. And today we're gonna sew the large. Now I cut the large out of the same fabric as I did the medium, because I, I was just doing one big cutting session. Ugh. So let me tell you what I have done so far. So in the instructions, you are supposed to uh, cut your pieces, right? And then you're supposed to apply the interfacing. And I have done all that. And then you are supposed to take the top edge of the exterior and the lining, and you're supposed to fold each of those down a quarter of an inch and give it a press. Uh, Copper Horse says, the store has a website you can maybe check out or call them for the fabric also. Um, website, yes. Calling, no, because most of the people here in the Czech Republic that have shops like that, little, little shops, Nobody speaks English and I don't speak Czech. So um, website, yes. Calling, probably not. So I have taken the top edge of my lining and I have folded it over a quarter of an inch and pressed it down so that it's creased right there. So it's easy to work with later on. And I have also done the same thing to my exterior. I took the top edge and I folded it over and pressed it down. So that is step four of making the Faithwell storage bin. Okay, now we're on to step five. So step five says cut the oval dash line from the paper handle template, fold the lining main panel in half, and um, 
would then draw, draw the oval on the wrong side of the fabric and this will be the stitching line. Okay, so the lining main panel is my lining. So I folded it in half and I made a crease with my iron right here so I know where the middle is. So now I am going to Um, on the wrong side of my lining main panel, I am going to draw, I'm going to put this on the middle and I'm going to just draw this oval onto my lining main panel. And I'm just using a, um, a water erase marker. All right, so I have drawn the oval on right there on the middle. Okay, so let's look at the next step in the instructions. Um, draw the oval, okay. Place the exterior main panel, that's my sunflowers, and the lining main panel right sides together. Stitch the oval stitching line directly on top of the lines. So I am going to make sure, now this is where um, a mistake, when I very first time did this, the, um, the store has a website you can maybe, oh yeah, where did that, okay. So you gotta make sure that the part you folded down, it stays the top and it's also, aligned with the part you folded down for the interior. You don't want to get those mixed up and switch them because it's really a pain to go back and take this thing apart and flip something over the right way. So just make sure. So since these, the exterior is huge, see how big it is? It's very big. Uh, Copper Horse says, I think Naomi's wall hanging over the sewing machine would look great. Okay, that's what I'll do then. I, I was having trouble making up my mind. And um, if, if you think it'll look great, I believe you. So that's probably what I'll do. The crew is coming um, this week some, at some point. Let me just check uh, my calendar. I could tell you exactly the day they're coming. Uh, let's see. Wednesday. They're coming this Wednesday to hang all the pictures. So, um, I have, uh, on the backs of those quilts, I have a, a fabric sleeve that I've sewed on. And then I have some wooden dowels that I got from the hardware store and I just slide those through and then you can just put hooks on the end and they hang on the wall. Okay, uh, so where was I? Yes, I was about to sew, right, 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 right. Okay, so I need to just line up my edges. We can unfold this, it's fine. And I just wanna make sure that I'm aligning, because I'm trying to sew the blue oval right now. That's what I wanna sew on. So I wanna make sure that I get the two ends aligned so that I have the blue oval sewn in the center of my exterior and my interior. Okay. And then I'm just going to put a couple pins around the oval to hold the fabric down so it doesn't slip when I am sewing the oval.
I wasn't paying attention to the one quarter of an inch folded over. See, see what I mean? See what I mean? Even though I have, this is the third time I've made one of these. I, I, sh you would think I would know better, but okay. I got it now. I got it now. All right. So I just put a couple pins there just to keep the fabric from slipping. And then I'm just going to go to my machine and I'm just going to sew this blue oval all the way around with a 2.5 millimeter seam allowance. My machine's right behind me. This is my, this is my Juki. It's a TL 2010Q. And this machine has been amazing. Um, when I lived in South, uh, see, I, I bought this machine in uh, 2019 before we moved to South Africa. So we had uh, just left Germany and we were back in Texas visiting family in between our two tours. And um, I went to this store and I found this machine and it was on sale and I was I just snapped it up and then they shipped it straight to South Africa for me. So I didn't have to um, carry it on the airplane, which was really nice. Um, so this machine will sew through 15 layers of denim. No kidding. I have sewn, um, when I was, I was doing a service project for my church in, when I lived in South Africa during lockdown. So I made 50 reusable feminine hygiene kits that had um, zipper bags, a big zipper uh, bag to hold the pads, and then a, a small waterproof bag to put a used pad in during the day when we were out and about. And then each kit contained 16 pads, um, eight light days ones and eight heavy days ones. And this machine just sewed through all of that, like, like nothing, like a knife, a hot knife through butter. Copper horse says, here's another fabric store in Prague, Lotki Surfani decorator and clothing fabrics, Budeshka 14, Prague 2, Vinhradni. Yeah, that's looks like it's in the same area as the other one, Textile Forum. They're both in Prague to Vin Rodney. Yeah. I'm in Prague 6, if that gives you a reference. Um, and then Copper Horse says, and this one also, Mar Marlena 4.278 Fabric Store, Carolini Svetle 9. Is that one, Copper Horse, is that one a an online store or is that a physical store? Okay, um, while, while she answers that, I'm going to sew this circle. Uh, not circle, oval.
All right, I have my circle sewn. Um, in-store pickup, it says, and in-store shopping also. Okay, cool. You're finding more um, fabric stores than I have, and I've been exploring the city on foot. The one that I've been going, uh, there's two I've been going to. I've been going to Lotke Mraz, M-R-A-Z, and I've been going to Flex Tex. Those are the two I've been visiting here in the city. All right, so I have my oval sewn. It's not perfect, but this, um, the curve is so tight there. It's, you know, your machine only sews in a straight line and then you're trying to sew around a curve and yada, yada, yada. Um, here's another textile store and textile company in Nahutich. Prague 6. No, really? Bubinich. Huh. I'm going to have to check that one out. But I have found that stores called textile stores sell towels and kitchen towels and napkins and tablecloths and uh, things like that. Because um, I was all excited when I saw a bunch of stores called textile. And I walked in and it was all like linens, sheets, um, table linens, bath linens things like that. So it was very disappointing. <laughs> you know, you get all excited about something and you walk in and it is not anything like what you thought it was. Very sad. Okay. So um, now we're going to look at the, what is the next step. Okay. So the next step after you sew the oval, um, then you cut the inner oval one quarter of an inch away from the stitching line and notch that seam. Okay. So I'm going to just, the best way to um, get inside of here is just, just to fold it like this and then make a snip right in the middle like so. And then I take my little tiny scissors because I need to get around that really tight curve here. Um, so I'm gonna take my tiny scissors and go and just cut out this oval. But don't get too close to the stitching a quarter of an inch away. Cause the last thing you wanna do is cut through your stitches. That would be a very sad day because then all of this will have to be thrown out. That's that's a bad day. Okay, so I'm just right now I'm just clipping about a quarter of an inch ish away from my stitches. This is why I have the tiny scissors because these little, this little oval in the nook there is very tight to cut. Okay, so I have my, my oval cut out and I left some seam allowance there. Now I'm gonna go through and make some little notches not clipping the stitches. So up to, but not into the stitches. Just around where it curves. This part up here that's straight on the top and bottom of the handle, you don't need to do, but around where the handle goes through and it's um the, the oval ends where it's all curved. Yeah, you need to do that there. Okay, there's one side. Oops, sorry, I didn't mean to bump you. My arm was going. 
I tried, um, I tried, I don't have a tripod. My laptop can't fit on a tripod. It's too big. Uh, Copper Horse says, Hobby Lobby Online and Joanne's Fabric sells cow fleece pattern fabric. No. -uh. Okay. Okay. The problem, yeah. I can use my VPN to look on there. You, if they see that your um, your IP address is overseas, they won't let you shop at at those stores because they don't ship international. Um, but I do have a um, a U.S. Uh, military style shipping address. Um, and I can use a VPN on my laptop to look on their sites. Okay, so now the next step is mm -mm, pull the lining through the exterior, through the oval, through the oval. Press, top stitch the oval using one eighth of an inch seam allowance. So I'm just gonna take all this lining and I'm just gonna poke it through the hole like this to so then now the lining will be on the inside of the um, storage bin where it belongs. And then you wind up with this handle with finished edges and you don't have any raw edges there. So, um, I just need to turn on my little iron so I can put, I don't keep this iron on all the time cause it gets super hot. See, it gets too hot and um, burns itself. So I'll turn my little iron on while I pull this through and I'm gonna use my fingers to just pinch this. And I wanna try to make sure that I roll the lining to the inside as much as possible because I don't want a whole lot of the lining poking through to the exterior, um, just so it looks nicer. So I'm just kind of, this is why you needed to um, clip here because the foam would have pushed the lining out. So since I clipped there though, now I can push the lining all the way to the inside. Bernina Center and, oh yeah. Yes, um, that's where I took my Bernina because she got sick from our traveling. Um, her, um, the shaft that holds the, the presser foot, not the presser foot, the needle, the part that goes up and down to hold the needle had got pushed out of alignment. And so I could not sew um, down the center. The, the shaft only stayed to the left. It wouldn't move and it wouldn't get centered. So I took my Bernina there and um, they got her all better. And the, um, the owner had seen my YouTube channel, my YouTube videos, and he called me the owner of the store he has um, and he's the Bernina ambassador coordinator for all of Eastern Europe. And he called me and said that he was um, thankful that I had brought my Bernina to his shop. And um, he was excited that I had featured some of the video that I got from his shop on my channel, which was kind of cool. I mean, I don't even have a thousand subscribers yet. I'm not even monetized yet. I've only been um, doing videos since I just checked my, my first video post date was May the 7th last year. Hi, Judy F. Welcome. I love watching you sew things. All I can make is a log cabin quilt, all straight lines. Well, if you can sew a straight line, you can sew anything. It's true because straight lines is the hardest things to sew. Right? Isn't it hard to make a line go straight? And you know, when I first started sewing back, oh, I was in high school 
And all I did was quilting. And um, all I sewed was quilting until I did the service project for my church during lockdown. And that's when I made the feminine hygiene kits. And sewing the bags to hold the feminine pads got me interested in bag making. And so I started making bags. And then it, I guess it was a natural progression to start making clothes after I made bags. I was like, well, I have these pretty bags. Now I need something to wear with it, you know? And then I started making, I'd make a dress and a bag out of the leftover fabric so that my fabric and my dress matched. I mean, my dress and my bag matched. <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty fun. It's really fun. Okay. I've just been fiddling with this and I'm supposed to be pressing it because I'm too busy flapping my mouth. Hang on. Let me press this. Okay. I'm pressing. And as I'm pressing, I'm trying to pull the, um, the lining to the interior as much as I can. And we have a handle. So I'm just going to go through and top stitch, just edge stitching around. It's not going to be perfect because it's a curve. It's a curve, Judy. It, it's okay if it's not perfect. You know, it's just fabric. Don't stress. Okay, so I'm going to just, I'm going to have my back to you for a second. It's not that I don't love you, but I need to just sew this. I'll be right back. I just messed up, Judy, because I was going in a straight line and it's supposed to be a curve. But I'm not mad at it. It's fine. <laughs> it's really, really, really bad. <laughs> but that's okay. This is just for me. Um, if I was going to give this to a friend as a gift or something, or if I was going to put it in an Etsy shop or something like that, I would definitely take that top stitching out and do it again. But since it's just for me, eh, it's okay. It's okay. Judy F says, my straight lines are far from perfect. Well, so are mine. <laughs> It's okay. It's just fabric. And the nice thing about stitching is if you don't like it, you can just take it out and do it again. Okay. I thought I had some. Oh, I do. I thought I had some threads to clip. I thought I saw some. But. Okie dokie. So it's not perfect. As you can see. But. It's just for me. So, all right, so let's look at the next step. Do, do, do. Step seven. That's where we are on the Faithwell storage bin from So Sweetness. It's a free pattern from SoSweetness.com. Go over to her website and check it out. She's got a lot of really nice free patterns, um, better quality than I would expect a lot of free patterns. And you know what else she does? She does video sew alongs for her free patterns. 
I love Sarah Lawson. It's one of my favorite uh, YouTube channels. She has a YouTube channel called So Sweetness, and she does social Sundays there. It's very nice. Okay, <clears throat> back to what I was doing. Stitch the short ends of the exterior main panel right sides together. Sew the short ends and press the seam open and then repeat for the lining. And it says for the lining, you start out at a quarter of an inch seam allowance, then you veer to a half an inch seam allowance into the in the middle, and then you go back to a quarter of an inch seam allowance at the bottom. I never have done that. And it's fine. If you just, you don't have to do that. I the, the point of that is to avoid what I had, the situation I have here. McKenna Brace Face Peterson. Brace Face! Me too! I found your channel a couple months ago and love it. I'm a newbie sewist and my first time tuning in live. Welcome, McKenna. I'm so happy you're here with me. Um, I have a YouTube channel in order to have community because... I live overseas in expat community and <laughs> I guess McKenna Braceface Peterson says, LOL. Yeah, fellow Braceface, definitely. <laughs> One of my brackets is broken right here at the very back. It came off of my tooth. And so my wire is poking into my cheek. And I have an appointment uh, this week to get that fixed, but um, my orthodontic clinic is super busy and I couldn't get one until Thursday and it's at 730 in the morning. And that is when 730 in the morning is when my two oldest go, their bus comes to pick them up in front of the house. And then the youngest one, the little one, the 10 year old doesn't get picked up until 745. So I'm going to have to leave them all alone and because um, I have to be at the orthodontist at 730. And my little one's going to have to go on his own. I'm a little nervous about that. But it's going to be okay. So back to what I was talking about. I was talking about, oh, McKenna Braceface Peterson says, oh, no, I had my fair share of broken brackets. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's fun. And I think, I think it's because um, that tooth is a crown. And so the cement has a hard time sticking to it. And I was eating nuts. They tell you not to eat nuts when you have braces, but I'm not very good at following instructions. Okay. So um, there, I was talking about how the lining, they veer from a quarter of an inch at the top and then as you get towards the middle you go to a half an inch seam allowance and then back to a quarter of an inch at the bottom the the purpose of that is to avoid the situation i have here where my lining is um big big here and it's to pull the lining in tighter in in inside the um faithwell storage bin so um if that's important to you I mean, I'm not going to be staring at the inside of my Faithwell storage bin a whole lot. But if you're going to give these as a gift to someone or if you're going to try to sell them in a market or something, I would definitely follow that instruction. I will if I remember. But um, I get happy on my seaming and I just tend to I, de I tend to take my my speed up to rabbit. This is rabbit here and it's turtle there. And I tend to take it up to rabbit and just, and then I, I forget. Um, McKenna Breeze Face Peterson says, Trader Joe's chocolate covered almonds get me every time. Oh, yum. Mm. I love chocolate covered almonds. I wish I wish I had access to Trader Joe's here in Chechia, but Trader Joe's doesn't, they don't have an online store. That's kind of part of their philosophy is that it's only available in the store. You have to go to their store in order to shop there. So <sighs> alas, alas. Okay. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put my exterior 
short ends, right sides together, and I'm gonna clip those with some wonder clips. And the part that I have folded down, I'm just gonna put that up and I'm gonna sew it like normal. And then after I'm done sewing, I will flip it back down. So I have my wonder clips here in this cute little tin. They came in this cute little tin from Amazon. So nice. So I'm just gonna clip this short ends of my exterior and my interior and then just sew straight down the sides. So, um, so McKenna and Judy, you both missed my show and tell at the beginning of my live where I talked about um, hanging my, my quilt hangings that I have made over the years here in my sewing room. Um, I recently moved into this house here in Prague. The last four years I've been living in uh, South Africa. And over the summer, we moved here to this house in Prague and um, all of our stuff has arrived. And this evening, I opened the last box. Yay! I opened the last box, looked at what was in it, closed it up and shoved it in a corner. <laughs> <laughs> do you do that when you move? You think, why did I bring this? It was a box of books and um, I'm not in a rush to, to put books out for the boys to get into and make messes all over the house. Um, my youngest boy is only 10 and uh, he still is not very mindful of where he puts things and how. He puts things away once he's gotten them out. I cannot tell you how many board games I have had to toss when we move because he likes to get the board games out and play by himself with the little pieces. And then he gets distracted and then gets up and runs somewhere else and leaves the board game on the floor and steps all over it. And yeah. Uh the joys of children. You know, I've been a mom for 34 years. My oldest son is 34 years old. Are you guys parents? Do you have kids? I have, um, I have seven, I have five sons and two daughters, uh, ranging in age from 34 to 10. McKenna says, no kids yet. I'm a new wife, just got married. Oh, congratulations. You just, getting married means the beginning of a new family. And that's, that is a cause for celebration. So I'm going to turn my back on you again. I'm just going to sew straight across the, the lining and the exterior. And then I'll come back and show you what that looks like. I'm just going to be right here.
Okay. So I have sewn the short ends of, let's see, let me catch up on the chats. Let's see. Judy F says, no kids, two nieces, three nephews, two great nieces, and three godchildren. That is a lot of kids in your life. That makes for a whole lot of fun. A whole lot of fun. And Judy F says, and a dog. <laughs> I haven't had a dog for the longest time. I miss having a dog. Um, our dog passed away. We'd had her for 17 years. And she passed away in September of 2021. And when we were in South Africa. And um, yeah, I miss having a doggy. Okay, so what I did with the lining is I did the thing. I did, started at a quarter of an inch, veered out to a half an inch, and then veered back into a quarter of an inch. So hopefully um, you will be able to see when I'm done that the lining is um, tighter inside. Okay, let's have a look at the instructions and see what we're supposed to be doing now. So... Flatten the main panel so the seam is on one end and mark the opposite end with your fabric marker. You'll be marking the wrong side of the fabric at the top and at the bottom. And bring that marking directly on top of the seam and mark the opposite ends. This will be known as the quarter markings. There will be four quarter markings, hence the name quarter, um, including the seam and also do the quarter markings on the bottom paper pattern piece, pa bottom panel pattern piece. Okay, so we're gonna do quarter marks. So what you do is you the seam and you just take it all the way here. This is the bottom because the handle is here and the handle is at the top. So that means that um, this is gonna be the bottom, top, bottom. Okay, so this is the bottom and I just wanna mark with my marker, uh, the halfway mark. And then I take that marking, it's right there, and I match it up with the seam. And I will, like this, so I have the, the mark and the seam matched up there. And then I'll mark here and here, and that will divide my bottom into four equal pieces. This is called quartering. This is how you sew anything that is round together, whether it be um, the cuff of um, a sweatshirt or the neck band in a t-shirt, the bottom band of a sweater or a sweatshirt. Um, you do it with quartering. That's how you get um, the, the same amount all the way around. So now I'm going to take my bottom panel and do the same thing. It's going to be the bottom of my Faithwell storage bin. I just realized I left my iron on and it's super hot and I just touched it. So I need to turn it off. Okay, so this is my bottom panel. I'm just going to fold it in half. Wrong way, so I can write well, wrong way, so I can write it. I can uh, make my marks. So fold it in half and make my mark. And the other side as well. So I have my two halves marked there and there. And then I'm just going to put those together, match them up. And then mark mark again here and here, and that will divide this uh, bottom into four equal segments. Okay. Now you need to do the same thing with your lining panel. Take your lining, and I know it looks weird, Take your lining, hold the seam, 
go down here and make a mark, the halfway point. And then you're gonna match up your mark with your seam so you can get your quarter marks. Okay. This quarter. This quarter. And you've got to do the same thing with your bottom lining panel. So um, you're gonna wanna make sure you mark on uh, the wrong side, not the right side. So this is the right side. The wrong side is the side where you can see the interfacing. So just fold it in half. And mark your halves and then put your two halves together and mark your quarters. I have trouble gripping fabric for some reason with my fingers, so I tend to lick my finger because for some reason it works better when my finger's wet than when it's not. I'll do the same thing for paper. I probably shouldn't do that. Do you do that? I do that. Okay, so I've matched up my two halfway marks. And now I'm just going to, there I go again. <laughs> now I'm just going to uh, mark my quarters. There, I did it again. Ah! Very bad habit. Okay. So all marked. Now let's look at the instructions. Where they go? Here they are. I know what they're. I know what we're going to do, but I just want to make sure that I read it to you. Okay. So um, okay. <clears throat> So it says, move the exterior main panel out of the way so that you can pin the lining main panel right sides together with the bottom edge of the lining panel, matching up your quarter markings. Pin and then sew using a half of an inch seam allowance and then trim the lining down to a quarter of an inch seam allowance. Okay, so I'm just gonna work with just my lining now. And remember the top is where the handle is. So opposite that's the bottom. Okay, so this is where I'm gonna be working, the bottom. Now, right sides together <clears throat> means that you're going to be working inside, inside here. This is the right side and this is the wrong side. Okay, so I'm going to take one of my quarter marks from my lining main panel, bottom panel, and I'm gonna match it up to the seam that I sewed earlier because that's one of that was one of our halfway marks. So I'm just going to put that there. And um, since this is fabric, not foam, I'm just going to pin it. Pin that. There we go. Then I'm going to go around the circle matching up my marks with my other marks. So blue mark, did it again. Man, it's a bad habit. I just did it again. <laughs> oh, you guys. <laughs> Okay, now this one, I've done two so far. I'm looking for the third one. There it is. 
I'm looking for the third one here. There it is. Okay, and then the final one, oopsie, I made a boo-boo. I matched up the wrong one to the wrong one, so I have to go back and do that. It's fine. This is the one I should have matched it to, so at least I didn't sew it that way. <laughs> This fabric is fraying like crazy. Um, for the lining, I didn't use a, a commercial fabric. I had a, an old sheet that was my daughter's that she had stained from her menstrual flow. So I just um, cut out the stained part and use the rest for lining fabric for different things. Why should I waste a perfectly good, nice woven cotton fabric? just because it had a big stain on it. Just cut the stain out. I took the, um, it was a, the fitted sheet, the bottom sheet. So um, I took the elastic off of the corners and I used the elastic to make my um, Avenir jumpsuit from Friday Pattern Company. You can go check out that video. I love that thing. I love, 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 love my Avenir jumpsuit from Friday Pattern Company and there will be more. It's so nice to wear. It's, uh, you know, I think that I, I really like um, things that are one, one piece clothes, like wearing a dress or a jumpsuit. Um, I think because it's easier. I don't have to try to match things up, you know. Uh, I guess I'm. Uh, I like taking the easy way out, apparently. <laughs> so I am an over pinner when it comes to these curved seams. So I'm going to be pinning this curved seam for a minute. You guys are being very quiet. You're not talking to me. Keep checking the chat. I'm one. Judy, you're one what? One over pinner like me? One hundred percent fascinated. Ooh, by my horrible sewing or my pinning. <laughs> so I'm getting the pinning around the outside edge. So did I? Um, have did you guys see my? Uh, <laughs> Did you guys see my uh, my Friday Sews video this week? Uh, it's been a couple weeks since I released one because I was out of the country. I was out of I was out of Czechia and I was in England. And um, it would have been fine except for we were staying in a farm on a on a farm way out in the southwest of England near Devon. I think we were in Somerset County. Somerset County. And the farm didn't have internet, Wi-Fi, and, and the cell service was just rubbish. That's a new British word I learned while I was there. Um, the cell service was just rubbish. So uh, I couldn't really keep up with uh, doing things for my YouTube channel. And um, I missed you guys. I miss being able, 
Uh, Judy F says, your ability to turn this fabric into something. Aw, thank you. Thank you. You know, um, I have this fascination with textiles. I am fascinated with uh, cloth. I love it. I love touching it. I love cutting it. I love measuring it. I love sewing it. I don't even mind unpicking when I make a mistake because I get to touch the fabric. The more fabric I get to play with, the happier I am. And uh, the sewing and the sewing community has literally over the last uh, 18 months saved my life, literally saved my life because I had a very bad trauma and um, because I've had sewing, I've been able to kind of like have a break from dealing with trauma. Um, it's kind of like when you're, when I'm really involved, deeply involved with uh, making something, there's no space in my brain for trauma or PTSD. My brain is so occupied with my project that um, there's nothing else. So I get to have a little vacation from dealing with all of that stuff. And it's so restful, so restful and peaceful. It brings me so much peace. Um, my sewing room is my refuge. It's the place where I can put down all of that stuff, you know? Uh, McKenna Braceface Peterson says, sending you hugs. I'm the same way. Thank you. Thank you, McKenna. I really appreciate that. Um, that's why I have a YouTube channel is for the community, for connection with people that are interested in the same thing that I am um, in the sewing because um, I'm an expat, you know, I don't, I don't have my family and friends around me. I'm out here in Chechia, in Prague, by myself with just my husband and three of my kids. I don't even have all my kids with me. Um, so it's really, really isolating and lonely. So having my, uh, my subscribers to talk to, having my YouTube channel, I can talk to the video camera. It's really nice. I really like it. And I really appreciate all of you who take time out to watch my videos, um, visit me on my live, and um, spend some time with me. I really do appreciate it a lot. Thank you very much. McKenna says, I'm in Los Angeles. Oh, wow. You're a long ways. You're in the Pacific time zone. That's a long ways away from me. I'm in Chechia. That's the Czech Republic. And it's the capital city of Prague. So the Czech Republic is the next country east of Germany. So if you picture Germany in Europe and you just go one country to the right, that's the Czech Republic. Um, the Czech Republic used to be part of the Soviet Union long ago during those days when Russia ruled. Um, but now it's um, independent. Okay, so now I have... Look at that. It's starting to look like a storage bin, isn't it? This is just the lining. So I need to uh, turn my back on you, unfortunately. And I'm going to sew this all the way around at a half an inch seam allowance at a 2.5 millimeter stitch length.
It's a big circle. I'm sorry it's taking me so long. But it's pretty big since this is the largest one. There we go. I have finished the interior, the lining. So I did a half an inch seam allowance all the way around the circle. So uh, it's starting to look like something, a three dimensional structure, see? Okay, now we have to do the same thing to the exterior, but this is thicker, so I can't use pins. I have to use Wonder Clips. This is burning me. I left my iron on again. I I don't remember turning it on. Maybe when I thought I turned it off, I, I, I didn't, I don't know. Okay, so I'm gonna take one of my blue dots and I'm gonna line it up with this seam that I sewed earlier. It's this quarter quarter marking that I made. Right sides together, so pretty side to pretty side. And I'm just gonna keep going around the circle. Making sure my blue dots match up. I am, I'm in love with this pattern because it's easy. You know, you have to fight with it a little bit uh, because technically you're sewing a rectangle to a circle. <laughs> um, but it makes my mathematical brain happy. I have a degree in mathematics. I was a math teacher at a high school in Texas for a long time. And um, I love geometry. And the way that these are put together is like cylinders, you know, and it reminds me of when I was teaching uh, my geometry students how to find the surface area of a cylinder. And we would take, um, I would take the labels off of cans and I'd, I'd uh, show my students that the, the length, the label is a rectangle and they measure the length of the rectangle and then you find the circumference of the circle that all along the bottom and they're the same. And so um, this just make, brings back those memories and, you know, it makes my mathy, nerdy brain really happy. I'm a very big nerd. It, for those of you who don't know me personally, <laughs> I am a nerdy nerd. 
I like science fiction and fantasy. Uh, McKenna says, oh, no, I'm having flashbacks of 10th grade math class. <laughs> that was one of my favorite grades to teach was 10th grade. Loved it. And my students loved my class. Actually, I got a lot of, I would get a lot of nice letters at the end of the school year from my students saying that uh, they understood math for the first time. And they actually felt like they could excel in math for the first time because I was their teacher. It was very rewarding. Here in Prague, I'm not teaching full time. I, um, to be honest with the state of schools these days, because I am a Christian, I'm, I'm really not that interested in professionally teaching in a school unless it's a private Christian school. Um, just because of my beliefs and I, I just don't want to have that fight all the time. You know, I just, life is too short for that much stress. It really is. And I have enough stress to deal with. I don't need any more. So I am doing uh, tutoring. McKenna says, I would have done much better if you had been my teacher, had always struggled with that. I'm sorry I couldn't be your teacher, McKenna. If you're going to go I don't know if you went to university or anything, but if you're going to go and you need help with math, I'm your girl. I can do Zoom meetings and I have a PayPal account, so let me know. So um, what was I saying? You know, I forgot. Anyway. I'm probably putting way too many clips on here. Uh, like I said, I did graduate from university. I'm a graphic. Oh, you know, my oldest daughter is a graphic. She got a degree in that too, graphics design. But she's actually teaching it, that kind of stuff, like computer artsy stuff, at a um, middle school in Texas because um, – she didn't like working as a graphic designer, but she still loves the artsy part of it. So she's actually teaching kids how to do it now. Uh, I went to, oh, there's a big heart in the way. I can't see that, what that says. Let's, can we move that heart? I went to something, pra, in NYC. I found my calling eventually. Is that the name of a university? Pratt? Pratt, yeah. Pratt Institute. Okay. Is that Was that a school specifically for graphic design or was it an art school? My, my daughter is very artistic. I happen to think she's super talented. But she says that I'm supposed to say that because I'm her mom. <laughs> So interestingly, her husband, it's an art school. Oh, awesome. That's great. That must have been a great place to go to school. Um, what was I going to say? Oh, interestingly, my daughter's husband um, and she both work at the same school. So my daughter's husband is, um, he works with special ed kids and he does like um, behavioral therapy kind of stuff. Um, yes, both can be true, mom and a good artist. My drawing ability is a zero. My daughter can draw and she draws like with the Apple pen and does the, like the digital stuff. Amazing, beautiful. But I'm more in to things I can 
work with with my hands. This uh, things I need to touch textiles. Um, I do crochet as well. I have just finished a really neat. I have my youngest son is um, ADHD, and he has a tendency to put his hands in his mouth, like when he's watching TV or something like that. So he needs something to do with his hands because he was biting his nails down until they were bleeding. So I I crocheted uh, this blanket that has, um, what do they, they call them, like popcorn balls. The whole thing's covered with them. And you can pop them through to one side and the other. And so he spends, instead of playing with his mouth now, he's like, popping the little balls in and out. So he'll go through the blanket and he'll pop them one way and flip the blanket over and pop them the other way. <laughs> okay. I have clipped the bottom together. So this is what I have so far. I have the lining sewn and I have the bottom clipped and they're just kissing right here in the handle. <laughs> so I am going to go to the machine now and I'm going to, I'm just going to wrestle with it like this and I'm going to smash this down and I'm going to sew all the way around like this with a quarter of an inch seam allowance at a, a 2.5 millimeter stitch length. So I'll have my back to you for a few minutes while I um, sew around this circle. So please bear with me. Chat amongst yourselves. Turn it up to rabbit. It was going too slow for me. Can you hear the difference? I got it. All right. So that is that. The bottom is sewn on. And now we're just going to put the, like a pillowcase, put it on. Put it on. <laughs> Come on now, be nice. The seam and the seam go together. 
just put this over the outside like a pillowcase. Oh, I was supposed to be a good girl and read the instructions. My bad. Okay. Here we go. Um, place the exterior and the lining wrong sides together. Uh, with the exterior facing right side out. Whoops. My bad, like this. Exterior facing out. Exterior is out. I have to follow instructions, otherwise. I'm not being a good teacher if I'm not following the pattern designer's instructions. Let me just turn my... Pretty fabric. I love this sunflower fabric. This was given to me by a very dear friend um, back in Texas, long, long ago, um, when I had uh, when I had given birth to uh, my little boy. So there it is. I just have to sew the lining down. Okay. So what you do now? Read the answer in. Um, place the exterior and the lining wrong sides together with the exterior facing right side out. Line up your quarter markings, align the press edges at the top of the storage bin, then pin in place. Top stitch the top edge of the storage bin using an eighth of an inch seam allowance. So, those two things that we folded under and pressed, we're now going to sew those together. So, I'm going to take my lining and I'm going to fold that fold under that I had pressed earlier. And I'm going to match that up to my seam, my two seams, match those up. Give that a clip and do that all the way around. And then sew it down and then we will be done. It will be done. Sadly, our time will be done because this will be finished. Okay, so I'm just making sure that my lining is folded down and my edges meet. They meet nicely, so it looks all pretty. I think this large size is going to be great for holding my fabrics. Um, I don't really like the idea of my fabric sitting out, getting like exposed all the time, but I like being able to see them. So I think I might make the a bunch of these. McKenna says, I've been wanting to make a similar bin for a house plant. Ah, okay. Well, that this bit, this uh fabric, um, fabric, bin, fabric, pattern, pattern. Words are hard, McKenna. Words are hard. The older you get, the harder they are. Um, this pattern is free. If you go to sosweetness.com, search for um, Faithwell storage bin, it's free. You can just print it out on your regular home printer and uh, you can tape the uh, pattern pieces together. There you go. And uh, Sarah, Sarah does a uh, video tutorials step-by-step. Step. It's very nice. She has a very nice little company. If you're into, um, Sewing things that are not clothing. Uh, Sarah Lawson is pretty awesome. She does quilting and bag making and she's the pattern designer. And she does, uh, her husband does all of the uh, video work and he's the techie guy. So they're in, it's just this little business that they have together, the two of them. And it's just so adorable. 
and they're so cute. Sometimes um, he comes on the the show with her, the Sunday socials, social Sunday shows with her. I think once or twice a month, and it's just so sweet. It's so sweet. So McKenna, hey, Dan, Daniel, why aren't you in bed? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> That's my son, Daniel. It's my, um, he's the third, three out of, he's number three out of five. But of the three youngest I have here with me, he's the oldest one. McKenna's saying hi to you, Daniel. So McKenna, did did I did you see the other two sizes of the Faithwell storage bin that I had made? I don't know if you were here when I showed them. I just have them right here. So this is the small. And this is the medium. So that's the small and the medium next to each other. And then when I get the large done, you'll be able to see I can't hold all three of, I only have two arms, so. But this is the medium and the large. And then the small. So I think the small one would be great for your planter. Hmm? And you know, you can get, um, as I have, waterproof fabrics so that you don't have to worry about it um, getting wet and growing nasty things that you don't want in your house. Because the waterproof fabrics, you can just wipe off with a towel. Daniel is the only one in the house who understands any check. So I rely on him quite a bit. It's because his first language was um, Ukrainian slash Russian because he's he and his two younger brothers are both from Ukraine. We adopted them five years ago from an orphanage there. So um, he's been a big help in helping me understand any check at all. I guess Ukrainian and Czech are close enough together that they have a lot of common words and sounds. Um, McKenna says, I didn't tune in until about 30 minutes. Okay, so um, I'm glad I showed them to you again. And then she says, I love them. I know, they're so nice. Uh, the small is such a cute pattern. Yes. It's daisy, no, sunflowers. It's still sunflowers, but little. And how cute is that? Uh, I think this is going to be a thread catcher for me. Because plants and me, mm, 
And since I move countries so much and I'm not allowed to take plants from country to country, you're not allowed to do that, by the way. You cannot take plants from one country to another country. They will not let you. Uh, I'll just wait to have house plants until we move back to Texas when I'm when I'm done traveling overseas. Uh, let me catch up with the chat. Uh, no, 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 no. McKenna says it would be perfect. It's a small yucca palm tree. Okay, so you're eventually going to need a bigger one. So, um, because it's a tree, it's going to get bigger. So if you get that pattern, start with the small. And you can get outdoor fabrics that will not, um, that are mildew resistant and stuff. So you don't have to worry about um, moisture. Judy F says, I've got to run. Nice hanging out. Don't forget to turn off the iron. Right. Let me check. Yes, it's off. Thanks, Judy. Bye. It's good to see you. I am almost done with this. So, guys, once I um, sew this final seam, this storage bin will be finished. So, um, yeah, can you believe that? And I'm almost done clipping all the way around the top. And I just sew around there. And we'll be done. I think I am going to um, take the extension table off of my Juki, though, so I can sew around on the outside. Darn it. I'm going to have to do some easing. I got a little too much fabric there. Take a couple pins out and spread this fabric out a little bit. That's okay, it's fine, it'll be fine, it'll be fine. It will be fine. Don't worry. It's just fabric. All right, so I have the lining secured now to the top. The lining was folded under a quarter of an inch to the inside and then the exterior is folded a quarter of an inch to the inside. And now I'm just going to sew all the way around and then we'll be done. Um, Kathy Brush Mattern says, I, turn, I tuned in late but have been here now for about 10 minutes. Fun to see you sewing live. I hope you do another live very soon and we'll try to remember and sew along with you. Do you want to see the other two sizes of the Faithwell storage bin that I have already finished? Um, I have them right here. So um, this is the small. And this is the medium. And then this is the large that I'm finishing now. This is a free pattern, free from um, So Sweetness. So if you go to SoSweetness.com, and you search uh, Faithwell Storage Bin, you can just print it out on your home computer because the pattern pieces are literally a half a circle. That's it. So it's really easy to print out. Um, McKenna says, what fabric is the lining made out of? So McKenna, I had an old fitted sheet that was stained from my daughter's menstrual cycle. So I just cut that part out. I cut off the um, elastic and then I just cut the rest of the um, 
sheet into strips, and that's what I'm using. I'm repurposing some fabric that wound, would have wound up in the landfill, doing my best to save the planet as I can. I used the elastic when I made my Avenir jumpsuit, so I reused that as well. Uh, Daniel says, great job. Thanks, Daniel. Uh, Kathy Brush Mattern says, yes, love to. Good. I'm glad I got to show you those. Uh, and then she says, awesome. Did you make all of them during this live? No, no. I made the smallest one on my own to test out the pattern and make sure that it was something I could do live. And it took me like 30 minutes on, uh, when I didn't stop to talk all the time. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, uh, it's really, really easy. Um, then on my last live that I think it was two weeks ago, I made the medium size one. So that was a previous live and I made some mistakes on that one, but it turned out fine. And then this live, I've been making the large. Uh, then she says, oh, cool. All right. Thanks. Okay, so I'm going to have to turn my back on you guys for a second. I'm sorry. My machine's right here. I wish it was right here because then I could, but then I wouldn't be looking at my hands and that could be very dangerous, especially when I'm sewing on rabbit. I sew on rabbit and this, this does 1,200 stitches a, a minute on rabbit. So... I'm gonna, oh, I need to take off my um, extension table so I can spin my my bin around the, um, the free arm. Just comes off that easy. I love my Juki. All right, here we go. I think I'm going to stand up for this one. My, my uh, pedal ran away. Okay, are you ready? Time me. Let's see how long it takes. Done. All right. That's the lining sewed in. Thanks, Daniel. I will. That's the lining sewed in. And I think this one does fit a little bit tighter than the last one because I did the, um, on the, mm, this seam here. I started at a quarter of an inch here and then I veered into a half an inch and then a quarter of an inch. So it does fit a little bit more snug. But there you go. That's the Faithwell storage bin, the large, sewn, all done. So there's the large and the medium. 
Now these I think are going to be, here, let me just turn the light down like this because that was obnoxious in your eyes. I'm sorry. What sewing machine, oh, McKenna says, what sewing machine would I recommend for a newbie? Okay, so McKenna, what kind of sewing do you want to do mostly? Are you interested in mostly crafting or garment making? Because that does make a difference. Because a machine that you use for crafting, you really only need a straight stitch. You don't need a zigzag. But if you're going to be doing clothing, you need at least two stitches, a straight stitch and a zigzag. Because you can pretty much do all of your basic clothing sewing with those two. So which one are you thinking you're going to be doing? Crafting to start eventually. I would like to experiment with apparel. Okay. Yeah. You're going to need something that will... Any... any basic machine, um, beginning level machine would work, but I don't recommend that you go with a brand that nobody's ever heard of. So there are uh, beginner level machines from Singer and Brother and Elna that are very good. Uh, Juki has a basic level model. This would not be a good one for you to start with because this is a semi-industrial. So this is like serious bag making machine. Um, but don't go with an off brand. Um, go with one of the big brands and go to a dealer that has lots of different brands because then um, they're not going to try to push one brand on you just because that's their brand that they're selling. Kathy Bush Mattern says, I do a lot of bag making and I use a lot of vinyl and cork. I keep buying bins like that at big lots to hold my rolls of material. So silly of me. I could just make those. Yes. And the pattern's free. Free, 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 free. You know? Um, so McKenna, go to a sewing machine dealer that doesn't sell just one brand. Okay. Because then you don't want to be pressured into buying just that one brand because that's where they're trying to make money. So go to a bigger one that has several different brands and tell them you want a, an introductory model and then sit down and try them. And, which, and then you can uh, experiment. But I would say Brother is a good brand. Singer is a good brand for introductory models. And when you get up higher and get more skill and you want to experiment with more um, different sorts of things, you are going to need a serger eventually. Before you need another fancier sewing machine, you're going to want a serger for finishing off your um, fabric and for sewing your um, knit fabrics. Then when you get more comfortable with that, then you're going to want to upgrade your machine, but that's not going to be for a while. And I would recommend a Bernina eventually um, because of their uh, quality and their service. But you don't have to get a, the big fancy Bernina 790 plus like I did. Um, I got that because my mom left me some money and she wanted me to buy something special with it. So that's the reason why I got that. Um, but a basic uh, burnet would be a great choice because it's still a Bernina, but it doesn't have as many bells and whistles and it still has the same quality and the same guarantees and, um, you know, service. Buying from your local dealer is the way to go. Do not buy on Amazon or the internet because then you don't get service included. If you buy from your local dealer, then you can get servicing at your dealer because you need to get your machine service at least once a year. And if there's a problem with your machine, you have the dealer to take it to. So please don't buy it online. Go into a dealer.
it's it's really a lot better. I recommend that highly. McKenna says, I was thinking a singer too. Yeah, yeah. For your introductory model, a singer, brother, Burnett. Um, my niece got a Burnett to start off. The, she actually got a, um, a used one from a sewing machine shop because a lot of times people will take their machine into a sewing machine shop and trade it in on a higher model. So a lot of sewing machine shops will have used machines that they have refurbished that you can buy for half price. So if you go to one of those places, you might be able to find a Burnett for a good deal. Yeah. So I highly recommend that. All right, you guys, that's, uh, that's me done for tonight. Thank you so much for joining me. Um, I just, I feel energized again. I feel ready to tackle my sewing room again. You guys have really, you just made my night by coming to spend time with me. I really appreciate it. So I hope you all have a great rest of your weekend and have lots of time with your family and time to sew something beautiful. Bye. Yes, McKenna. I will. Bye, you guys. Nine forty eight, Kathy. PM. Yeah, it's past mama's bedtime.